Our next speaker is from the business school. And he talks about something very interesting. As a communications consultant, I know that there's a very simple tool we can use to immediately upgrade our communication skills. But somehow, it's a very difficult tool, especially for my husband. It's the art of listening, okay? Our next speaker is a leader in organizational psychology. He's the father of many HR methods that have been used in the biggest companies around the world. It is my pleasure to invite on stage Professor Avi Klugel. Good evening, I'm uh, delighted to have been invited to uh, talk to you today about the soft power of listening. But in order uh, to make my point come through, I would like you to indulge me and to participate in a few minutes exercise. What I'd like you to do is to turn to a person next to you, preferably the person you know less, and just start chit-chatting right now in pairs, no trios please, find another partner. Just start chit-chatting with a person next to you. I'll give you more instructions in one minute. Can I find some conversation? Thank you. So what is listening? Actually, it's hard to define. It's easier to tell you what listening is not. And you may realize what listening is not if you think about yourself when you speak to someone and that someone nods and says, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, while they are playing with their smartphone. How well listened do you feel at that minute? Or when you talk to someone on the phone and you hear the clicks of the computer at the same time, or the chopping of the onion. Or when somebody tells you, I know what you mean, and you realize they want to take the turn and they want to talk. They want to stop you before they understand what you mean. And if somebody is telling you, I've told you a thousand times, you know that they're trying to coerce you and they never listen to you. And when somebody gives you an advice, when you never ask for it, you know that they are not listening. And when that someone is waiting impatiently, willing to strangle you so they can talk, they are not listening. So what is listening? Well, actually, it's a global assessment that you all know. You feel when somebody is listening to you, when you feel that they are paying attention to what you're saying. You feel that they are understanding of what you're saying, and you sense that they are on your side. So I start to study what do we know about listening with meta-analysis. And let me explain. When I was a child, I used to collect stamps. And I would organize the stamps, one uh, page on the album for USA, for France, few pages for Israel. Nowadays, I do the same. I collect empirical papers linking listening with whatever I can find. And I organize them on different pages, listening and performance, listening and depression. And let me show you what I found. Uh, on the bottom, I uh, standardize everything that I found. So there is a scale of a correlation between zero and one. And the first thing I noted is that women are better listeners than men. Maybe not. And um, you may want to ask, is a correlation of 0.2 a little, a lot? Well, maybe it's not uh, a lot, but it's among the top 15% of psychological differences known between men and women. Next, uh, reducing depression. People who have listeners around them are less depressed. And that includes experimental studies. Is it a lot? Is it a little? Suffice to say that other meta-analyses suggest that cognitive behavioral therapy is slightly less effective than listening. And that uh, drugs are 
less effective than listening for reducing depression. I'm not suggesting you stay, take, stop taking your drugs, just add listening to it. <laughs> uh, then job performance. People who listen better are performing better. For example, salespeople that listen better sell more. Physicians that listen better have less malpractice suits against them. School principals who their teachers are saying that they're a good listener have students that excel in national standardized exams. Uh, managers of uh, food franchises that their workers are saying that they are better listeners have less reports of accidents on their premises and on and on and on. And the correlation is about 0.3. Is it strong? Is it little? Well, suffice to say here that there is no personality trait that can predict performance as good as listening. Employees are saying that their boss is a good listener, have less burnout. In other words, a boss that doesn't listen is a walking hazard for the health of his or her subordinates. From my own laboratory, six experiments suggest that if you listen to me, you will change my opinions and you will make them more moderate. You will allow me on my own to recognize the pro and the con for anything I'm talking about. And now this is in social sciences already getting to be a strong effect. You can change opinions by listening and not by arguing. The job satisfaction of people with uh, listening bosses is much higher. And in fact, the correlation is so strong, it's, the relationship is about 13 times more potent than the relationship between actual salary and job performance. So now, in case you know some corporations or an organization, ask yourself how much effort organizations are putting into creating the dream uh, uh, salary package or reward package to motivate their employees. And how many pennies are invested in teaching the supervisors to listen to their employees? And if you think about these two questions in combinations, where the yield on the investment will be higher by an order of magnitude. And then people who listen well are better trusted. And it's true for salespeople. And it's true for physicians. And it's true for bosses. And the correlation between patient satisfaction and how well the doctor listened to them is amazingly strong. And maybe not amazing or a lot of pain involved here. Marital satisfaction is strongly correlated with how well you perceive your partner or your spouse to be listening to you. And really off the charts, in my entire career, I've never seen a correlation so high between constructs that are supposedly different. What's the relationship between leadership and listening? And the results over 8,000 people are uh, summarized here suggest that employees who see their boss as a good listener are saying this person know how to make people go after him or her. So, this is just a, a short summary of what I found, but the conclusion is very simple mathematics. One equal two. One good listener creates benefit for two people, for the listener and for the speaker. Now, another good news from this meta-analysis is that listening is trainable, and strongly so. We can learn to be better listeners. So I want to leave you with three suggested steps. If you decide that you want to improve your listening a little bit, repeat the exercise we just did here. In fact, I'll give you one testimonial of a couple of donors that visited the Hebrew University about two months ago, and I sent them home to try five minutes for each side, just to listen. And this is what the husband said. This exercise reminded me once again of why we dated and then got married 47 years ago. And the wife, 
I enjoyed having five or more minutes to explain my thought without any interruption. The second suggestion is ask. Ask for stories. When you meet a person, don't ask what do you do for work or something. They ask, can you tell me a story about your work? Can you tell me a story about your name? Can you tell me a story about the history of your family? Can you tell me a story about your hobby? It's very easy to listen to stories. And second, I learned from my butcher in the market in the Shuk Machne Yehuda in Jerusalem. Whenever I asked for uh, two pounds of chicken, he said, automatically, and what else? <laughs> Now imagine that the next time you talk to a person, instead of jumping with your answer, you stop and say, is there anything else? Could you tell me more? And see the miracle beginning. And my last recommendation, if you want to learn to listen, is forgive yourself. I know that I'm trying myself to learn to improve this skill, and I fail about 50 times a day. Um, the failure is not the issue. The issue is, can I learn from it and improve a little bit day by day? So I want to leave you with one question. What will be your first step? Thank you.